afternoon. Um, Aquaculture Committee is a collection of aquaculture managers from the states and territories, and it also includes the Commonwealth, FRDC, CSIRO, Subcommittee for Aquatic Animal Health, and the National Aquaculture Council with Aaron on board. Um, it sits underneath a committee called AFMF, the Australian Fisheries Management Forum, which is the DG level committee held at the Commonwealth level. So the committee itself really is looking at collaboration at the national level and focusing on trying to reduce business risk and yet still have sustainable aquaculture. Um, our work program, in part, has been dictated by some of the findings of the National Productivity Commission in 2004. I know it goes back a long way, but it stated that aquaculture production is subject to an unnecessary complex array of legislation and agencies. There's potential for greater use of innovative policy instruments, such as clear guidelines, spatial planning, using environmental risk assessment, and allocation of marine leases to provide long-term industry future. So that's certainly been part of the program we've been working on. But in uh, recent years, it's probably more about industry development, focusing on industry development, and learning off each other. So by either um, good design or by good luck, the latest report from the Productivity Commission said there's little evidence suggesting that regulations have impeded the viability or growth of aquaculture businesses, but we still need greater use of spatial planning and addressing community concerns, such as environmental impacts and social licence to operate. So I guess in future our focus will be the issues identified in the National Aquaculture Strategy. And I think um, Jerry, who spoke before, made a really interesting point about innovation and what that will look like in 2027. So we don't know what's going to happen to the industry in 2027. So I guess as regulators we need to be very flexible and adaptive to recognise different forms of infrastructure, different forms of monitoring. And even a case in New South Wales, we made an application in 2013 for a lease area in 20 metres of water, thinking that that was suitable for offshore fish farming, and it's not. It's 40 metres for current technology, so we had to reapply for that area. So we need to be adaptive. What I'd like to do is, is highlight some initiatives that are innovative and have assisted industry development across Australia and have come through the Aquaculture Committee. So all states are involved in policy and zoning plans. In New South Wales, we have our own state environmental planning policy for aquaculture, under which sits a land-based and oyster industry sustainable aquaculture strategy. And we're just developing a marine water strategy, which is looking at policy, best practice, and will identify and get approval for sites. So Brad, I'd like a business card when we finish this talk, please, because that's the sort of business we're looking for. <coughs> Um, in Queensland, the Queensland Government went forward with 26 lease areas for extensive aquaculture and they've been offered. And right now they're looking at land-based aquaculture sites for marine aquaculture. Tasmania, the Salmon and Industry Growth Plan has been released very recently, looking to double industry production and also move offshore. <coughs> and in WA, as you heard, we're seeing um, extensive aquaculture zones in the southwest. And in the northwest, we're seeing intensive aquaculture zones. And I think the Abrolhos area was just approved on the 15th of this month. And South Australia probably leads the marine zoning side of things. They've done a very good job. They've gone forward and reviewed their Eastern Spencer Gulf program. So these plans are whole of government approach, and they're giving industry greater surety and security um, they're looking at environmental protection and they're giving the community a better information source. So it's really supporting the social licence of the aquaculture industry in Australia. We talk about GIS technology. We can see the land use planning in Queensland for the land-based sites. And we're doing that work in New South Wales at the moment. So constraint mapping and then developing a matrix. Um, so the image over here is New South Wales coastline. So what we're looking at is the distance from port, the depth, the wave, climate, and we're building up a kilometre by kilometre grid of where a suitable site may be for aquaculture, marine aquaculture in New South Wales waters. The intent is we can go forward and apply for that area, or investors can use that information. In terms of kick-starting industries, in Western Australia, they're in the process of building a multi-species shellfish hatchery, as we speak, in cooperation with the WA Aquaculture Council. 
South Australia are responding to the threat of POMs and the shortage of supply from Tasmania, that's the Pacific Oyster Mortality Syndrome, um, where we can't get spat out of the Tasmanian hatcheries. So they've expanded their hatchery, they've invested in two hatcheries, and they've expedited the approvals for two hatcheries. And in New South Wales, we have the experience and the capacity to supply yellowtail kingfish for a joint research project with Huon Aquaculture, looking to determine the feasibility of offshore sea pen farming in New South Wales. In terms of the environment, there's a much greater level of transparency in the aquaculture industry and in government. Um, the South Australian government's moved forward with an annual reporting performance report. So people have access to data, be it environmental monitoring, be it compliance, be it aquatic animal health. And in New South Wales, we're just about to release our annual report for the marine aquaculture research lease. But we're getting data for marine fauna monitoring up on the web every two weeks. And working with the University of Newcastle, we're getting our water quality and benthic sampling up on the web every six months. The other thing that's going up on the web are the video transects under the pens within the lease, on the corners of the lease, and at control sites near these, um, near these pens. So it's a greater level of transparency. It's helping us develop policy for sustainable aquaculture. Probably the most um, important bit of research I've seen this year to help policy development and community consultation has been the FADC-sponsored Kate Barclay Socio and Economic Evaluation of um, Aquaculture in New South Wales. So it gives you the economic multipliers, it gives you the employment multipliers, which we never had, but it goes further. It talks about how aquaculture fits into a community and how important it is for the community. So when we've developed EISs previously, we had a shortfall of knowledge. We were relying on other states' information, and now we've got our own, and we hope we can keep building on that. And Kate makes a really, really good point in her paper that that lack of information made industry vulnerable to resource allocation issues. Thank you. And some of the survey points she's um, brought out, 96% uh, of the surveyed people prefer local seafood production because it's better for the local community. 84% of those surveyed agreed aquaculture is important in towns for employment. And importantly, 75% of tourist operators agree aquaculture was part of the local tourism product. So it's really, really positive stuff which we can use. We've heard a bit about biosecurity and in terms of on-farm risk management, we have the Commonwealth producing a template for farm biosecurity plans. And in South Australia, in response to the Tasmanian POMS event, They've stepped up their surveillance, um, their translocation protocols, and uh, are really trying to nail protecting that industry from any threat from this virus. And also with Aboriginal aquaculture, we see a couple of states leading in the Northern Territory. They have a tropical rock oyster project working in remote Aboriginal communities. Um, they're really looking to look at the feasibility of this with black lip and milky oysters. And in South Australia, um, they've got two intertidal aquaculture zones just approved, and that, we hope, will really help the benefit the uh, local community there in South Australia. So these are just some of the initiatives moving forward um, to improve industry development in Australia, and it's happening, as I mentioned, very quickly, and we have to be adaptive for it, but so far, it's all good news. So I'd just like to acknowledge the rest of the uh, committee members helping with this talk. Thank you. Thank you.